Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. Thank you for joining in. Have you ever looked at your camera and looked over the features and thought, gosh, I wish I could extend this just a bit more, do just a bit more with it? Well, we may have an answer to that question. Stay with me. Okay, so once again, I'm Nate, this is Photo Lungism. If this is your first time joining in, uh, I do a lot of work on this channel to surface the free, cheap-ish art technologies. I focus a lot on open source, so you can know about great tools that are out there that add a lot of value to the art community and could possibly help you move along in your endeavors and your, um, your mission in life. Uh, today, I really wanted to touch on a different kind of tool. We've done a lot of image alteration, tonal controls, video editors. Go back and watch this if you haven't had a chance. Today, I wanted to look at a camera control application, which is a really fascinating thing. I'm working on a Windows 10 PC. I do believe there are Winix, uh, Winix, Linux adaptations for this as well, but this is a Windows 10 build and we're looking at digicam control which i found just by curiosity really of seeing well what's in the open source portion for nikon because i'm i work with nikon primarily however this tool that we're about to look at does have a wide range of support of camera control options i'll bring that up quickly here and it's a really extensive list and it's really really good about what it's able to control by model so you can get a good sense of whether it is, whether it's Nikon or Canon or Sony, um, as well as other models here. So you can get a really good sense of what this will support by looking at the website. I'll put a link to that in the description below for also for download if you'd like to try this out for yourself. So again, Digicam Control. This is a really fascinating way to extend your camera with what you have to add features and really ultimately what this is about to do is turn your workstation, your laptop, your smart device into a remote, a really intelligent remote. And there's a lot of fascinating ideas and concepts that come with this. So first thing I'm gonna do is flip on my camera. I'm working on a Nikon D5300 and you can see the settings get detected automatically. And right now I'm just on a USB 2.0. Nothing so fancy, and really that's kind of outdated by today's standards, but it still works, can still accomplish um, great things uh, for what we're about to do. So you get the readout of what the camera does. It does give you a readout of the battery, which is pretty cool. You can keep track of that while you're working. Uh, some of the cooler things that you can get to would be jumping into live view here, and I can engage my camera, and you can see <laughs> me. <laughs> um, but you can add controls to it uh, as kind of like a studio view. That, that would be a really good application for this for kind of the, the touchless idea that I wanted to set up a shot and I wanted to be very careful about how it works. I could actually control the camera in large part from my computer. There's some basic zoom and retraction controls. This looks mostly digital, but it can, it has some possibilities. Uh, you can add in motion detection, which is an interesting side of this, in that you could wait for there to be motion for the capture to start, which is a really fascinating idea. And that really doesn't even have to apply to studio photography. You could theoretically employ this as some kind of pseudo security device if you wanted to, because you're hooked up to a computer that has a hard drive uh, larger than the camera. And you can set this software to record either to the camera, to the computer, or both. So really your storage could become the computer and you could use this as kind of a pseudo way of capturing wildlife if you wanted to watch for that in a certain area or as, a, as I said, a pseudo security system that is triggered by motion, which is a really fascinating idea. You have all the usual settings you'd expect around that with how long it should go when it detects motion and those kinds of things. And there's a threshold for the actual motion itself. So that's a really cool idea. Uh, there are some basic focus controls. It looks like the shot on there is, is uh, not ideal at the moment, which that guy can adjust on the camera and uh, play with that a bit, but you get an idea of how it works. I could also play with that from here. There's an autofocus button where I can pop that and again, control right from the computer versus doing that. So you do get this idea of I can control the camera in real time. I could take video this way. I can take pictures that way. And that's a really, really cool innovation to see with this open source tool. So backing off of that, 
There are other choices here that I wanted to highlight. Um, they're along the top here and you can play with them. You can interact with the camera directly to download pictures this way. Uh, you can do a time lapse, which is a really awesome thing. I cannot do this with my model of camera by itself, where I can actually set specific start times and end times and say, okay, well, as of this time, do that and start and stop recording and do that kind of thing. That's really cool, because if I wanted to set a time sensitive recording of something, I could do that. It gives me the ability to do a span of time, which I could not do. That's really, really interesting. To take that one step further, it actually has this astronomy piece where you can add in uh, the ability to do nighttime photography. It's, it's really kind of a cool idea. There are um, some possibilities to add in scripted pieces of this, and I haven't played with that too much, and I think what that's doing is it's helping you play with uh, the settings of the shot where you're going to force in perhaps uh, the ISO or the shutter or those kinds of things, how long it stays open, and there are controls, coded controls for doing that with scripts. So I did briefly look at the help for that. It does seem fairly straightforward and simple. These are like one-liner things, um, and it didn't seem like it would be that difficult to, to jump through without a lot of experience in that. So again, just amazing ideas and possibilities about what you could do with this, <laughs> that you could even leverage your camera in ways it wasn't designed to do just by extending it with software outside the camera. And how else is that? <laughs> so great ideas. Again, like I said, you could use it for studio because you can control it without touching it. So there's no risk of bumping it. You could do this for stop motion, which is another really intriguing idea of doing this again, because it's touchless and you can initiate captures from the software without ever touching the camera. You could very easily work on animation in a scene without ever touching the camera. So it would be very still, the transition should be seamless. Great opportunity there. We talked about time lapse, we talked about night photography and the motion control ideas. And there's probably a lot more that I haven't even touched on here. There's the ability to pair with Wi-Fi. My camera does have a Wi-Fi uh, option where I could flip that on and pair it with my phone or you know, and download wirelessly. This kind of helps you shortcut some of that. Again, I haven't played with it too much, but the functionality is there. The options are there. So I'd encourage you, go try this out, play with it. Um, it does look like there's some options for additional extensibility outside of what even comes out of the box. So that's very exciting. Again, it is open source, and this was a fairly recent release. This is version 212. So that's the one I'm playing with right now. And again, I really encourage you to go try it out. And Talk to me about how it goes for you, because again, I'm, I'm like scratching the surface and finding the gee whiz wow that pops out at me with just a little bit of play, but I'm really curious to see what you find and what we can share with the rest of the community, because that's what I'm hoping to build is a community of learning for all of us. So thank you for sticking with me this far. If it was helpful, please give me a thumbs up and also subscribe so you don't miss out on the other great things that we do. Don't hesitate to go back and watch the videos to see the great content that we have brought us, that has brought us all the way up to this point. And I do encourage you also to join the conversation. Leave a comment, ask questions. Lots of us around here are asking questions and all trying to learn the same ideas. So I think it's fitting that we try to help each other in the best ways that we can. So thank you so much for doing that in advance. I'll see you at the next video.